man down! I'm not the one to fear, Prime. There is a darkness coming. You've never faced anything like this. Let them come. In Transformers The Rise of the Beasts, the giant transforming mechanical creatures are back to save the world, and this time they're teaming up with the Maximals, which are basically transformers that turn into animals instead of cars and trucks. Look, I'm not much of a fan of these movies, but I do understand the appeal to its preteen boy fan base. Once again, the film is loud and packed with giant robot special effects and thrilling fights and chases. They even went and tried to give the human characters a story. So as far as Transformers movies go, Transformers The Rise of the Beast is better than expected. Although that's not really saying much. You guys started at the very bottom. I know I don't look it, but I got a PhD. Hmm. I'm poor, hungry, and determined, sir. Okay, I can see you're gonna be a weird one. Flamin' Hot is the rags to riches story about how a janitor at Frito-Lay helped the company develop its line of flaming hot Cheetos. Now, apparently the movie play is a little fast and loose with the facts, but there's no denying the film's Horatio Alger's appeal. It's a lot of fun to cheer on the lowly worker as he ascends to the rank of successful corporate executive thanks to his instincts and his supporting family. Get out there and be great. And that's what's new this weekend at the movies. I'm Sean McBride, the movie guy. Sean McBride, the movie guy, is here to give us a look at some of the movies that are hitting theaters, maybe streaming. But first, I want to talk about last week. OK. How Spider-Man. Spider-Man did better than projected. And oh my it's gosh. interesting because it's been kind of a soft year, yeah. with the exception of Super Mario Brothers. Everything just kind of didn't live up to expectations. Right? Spider-Man did. And that is actually not very good news for this week's new release, because this one, the big one, obviously, this week is right. Transformers Rise of the Beast. And I suspect it will open a little soft because Spider-Man will hold very well. And people who didn't go see it by now have heard all their friends and their film critics. But right. uh, they'll say, the friends said, oh, that was amazing. Yeah. They're, they're, I'm hopefully, they're, that Sean the movie guy was right. right. You know, So uh, I think a lot of people will go see Spider-Man and they'll do that one over Transformers. Mm. It's certainly the better movie. OK, well, then my next question would be, when it comes to Transformers. First of all, how many are we on at this point? Because it seems like it's never ending. Number seven. So number it's not seven. quite as bad as Fast and the Furious. I guess that's know. a good point. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because we had this discussion with Fast that every time a big sequel happens, yeah. I kind of feel the need to go back and watch at least the last three or four films. Sure. And I don't feel the need to do that with the Transformers because there's nothing going on in these stories that matters. These <laughs> movies are about giant spectacles, about giant robots. I know they're not really robots. They're sentient, you know, mechanized sure. creatures with a with a spark or a soul, you know. Uh, but the humans are not really generally a part of the story. They're just the meat bags that connect the the fight. Right. That being said, I do appreciate that this time around they do try and give the human characters a backstory. So it's Anthony Ramos in particular. He's got a brother. He's very sick. He's trying to get money to help him with his health care, and he, he agrees to carjack, and turns out the car he's stealing is a Transformer, and it's hard oh. to carjack a car well, that the yeah. car doesn't want to be stolen, you know, so. Mind of its own, yeah, yes, makes exactly. it a little difficult. So, that's interesting, it's uh, Pete Davidson who's playing that car he steals, oh. and, and Pete Davidson is such a recognizable voice, yeah. and he really leans into kind of the 90s, this is, takes place in the mid 90s. So he's, you know, at one point he walks in and, and the car says, you know, Wu Tang in the house. And it's like, <laughs> I mean, and then part of me is going, well, they're not even playing Wu Tang. They played right. Wu Tang at the beginning and they played Cream, <laughs> but now they're playing Biggie. And it's like, oh, come on, guys. It's kind of sloppy like that. But I suspect if you're in the target demographic, yeah. which means if you're a 8 to 14 year old boy, yeah. It's probably, you know, Pete Davidson's character is funny and silly and over the top and probably perfect for that group. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the point here. These special effects are impressive. The action is loud and, you know, ear popping and eye popping. And it's not a good movie. There's not good story. It's better than most Transformers, uh, quite frankly. Yeah. But that's a very low bar to set. I mean, it's just big action. I suspect if you're, you know, a, a small kid, you'll like it. Plus, we get the new toys. I mean, excuse me, the new characters, the <laughs> Maximals, um, which are Transformers that instead of transforming into cars or trucks, they they transform into animals. So there's oh. a giant gorilla, you know, and a raptor, and it's, you know, it's um, Ron Perlman playing uh, Prim uh, Optimus Primal. Oh. Uh, the gorilla oh. character, nice. and so they do that. And listen, I watched this movie, and I was leaving. There was a kid. I'm guessing he was like seven. I couldn't see his face because he was wearing a maximal 
in a mask. Was he? So there's already the merchandise is oh, already yeah. out there, and the kids have already noticed it. Look, if you're a if you're a boy in particular, I don't think this is a movie for girls. Uh, if you are old enough to play with the toys, mm -hmm. or maybe up to mid high school, but if you're in high school, you should be moving beyond these movies. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's it's mindless mayhem. And sometimes that mayhem works. I, I'm able to tap into right. my inner lizard brain, and oh, yeah. the 14-year-old boy in me goes, "Yeah, cool, big robot smash," you know. <laughs> um, but like I say, not a good movie. But it does what it's supposed to do. Yeah, entertain the, the the young boys. Exactly. If you are a teenager and want to go, <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> you move on from but it. But that's no. exactly it. If you're a teenager, you're going to see Spider-Man. Uh, that's a good Spider -Man point. Spider-Man is a much cooler movie, particularly aimed at younger, you know, not at the young kids. This is a movie that's aimed at kids who are still yeah. playing with toys. It made me chuckle a little bit. Is meat bags a, a common term oh, yes. when it comes yeah, to, yeah, yeah. To, to, to movie critics here? Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> so, uh, like, is Shia LaBeouf still in these? No, no. He's, no, he's always been gone it's for a long time. It's funny because these things started out as Michael Bay directed movies. He's he's still a producer, right? but he's not involved in that. It, the whole cast, the Megan Fo Fox and all oh, yeah. that, they're all gone. Uh, Mark Wahlberg, if you remember, he was in one of them. They actually make a joke about him because this really? is kind of a prequel and oh, okay. and he says I hear Mark Marky Mark is leaving the funky bunch what is he going to do and it's funny because he's going to go on to make a Transformers movie right. so oh. I, I mean I did appreciate the spirit like I say it's better than most of okay. the Transformers movies that is not saying a whole lot but um, like I say that kid it was very exciting to see yeah. the Maximals in the Transformers movie. I'm sure there will be plenty who are very excited for that one. But, okay, so maybe for the folks who will not be excited for Transformers, <laughs> what else do we have then? Back to Spider-Man. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no. Uh, the other one of note this week is over on both Hulu and Disney+, Plus, which oh, is kind okay. of interesting that it's releasing on two streaming services. Yeah. Uh, Ava Longoria, you know her from Desperate Housewives. Yep. She, for the past decade, has been making small, you know, short films. Yeah. And this is her directorial debut. She is making a film called Flame and Hot, which is based on a true story, but in Hollywood speak, that doesn't mean there's anything true about it. You yeah. know, so, and it's already, honestly, it's already taking some heat for um, not being completely true, for playing mm -hmm. fast and loose with the facts here. But it's the story of a guy, uh, Montagnes, who is... He's just a, he's a guy who grows up in, in California. He's yeah. running with gangs. He tries to get his life in order when he has a family. He gets a job playing as a janitor at the Frito-Lay company. And then he sees this video from the corporate president that says, look, we need you to help. Times are tough. And so he do, he's the guy that comes up with the idea for Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Really? And so this is his... Yeah, like I say, his true story. Now a lot of people say, well, yeah, you know, he's good. taking credit for a lot of stuff here. But it's 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 a story of it's an Al a Horatio Alger story about a a guy who believes in himself, even though he's a lowly janitor, and he's yeah. he's kind of always running to these corporate execs that are saying, what are you doing? Don't talk. You're a janitor. Mm -hmm. But he has this great idea, and he's willing to put in the work. It's also a story of Mexican pride, quite frankly. Um, it is a story about a guy who does this stuff. Um, he rises, rags to riches, rises from janitor to a corporate CEO thanks to the support of his family, his yeah. wife in particular, but also his kids. You know, they're the guinea pigs that have to eat all the flaming Hot Cheetos. And, oh, boy, yeah. You know, he's got a young son who is very cute who's always going, yeah, yeah, this is too hot. And he goes, <laughs> hot good or hot bad? And he goes, no, no, good. I like it hot like that. So. <laughs> um, it's got some nice fun touches. Uh, there's a moment where they do a pan across the, uh, the warehouse, and she's got all the forklifts have different numbers on them, which correspond to the passing of the years. And that's oh. a kind of fun thing. And I kind of liked it. It is cheesy. But um, at one point, he because he comes from a gang background, he's talking about these corporate board room mm -hmm. meetings. But he's using voiceovers where they're like speaking like gang members, <laughs> you know, where they're always threatening to kill right. someone who's out of line here. Except that it's these, you know, these older white guys that yeah. are just like, you know, well, they would never do that. And he always says, yeah, that's not, that's just in my head. But this yeah, is, you know. that's what I picture. Um, so I think there's some, uh, some fun stuff here. I don't think it's going to set the world on fire. Yeah. Probably not going to be any Academy Award nominations for this but uh, you know Ava Longoria good nice uh, first project for her and okay. I think it's uh, I think it's pretty a feel-good film that was gonna so. be my question did she live up to you know yeah, I mean, directorial de debut. She has a nice fun, there's a few nice touches, and certainly it's uh, professionally competently made. Right. And you kind of need to do that in your first couple of films, then you can take more, you know, artistic mm -hmm. uh, flourishes as you get a little farther into your career. So, yeah. Okay, so two options there for you. Mm -hmm. Slow week, and you know, slow with just week. two, but. You know, it's interesting, we thought Little Mermaid was going to do 
blockbuster right. numbers, and it's quite frankly not. Yeah. So that's a little stuff, but that was aimed at families and girls. Spider-Man we thought was going to do well. It is. That's aimed at the teens, teens, and then Transformers is aimed at the boys. Right. And so you have all these quadrants being served, and if Transformers isn't quite as strong and Little Mermaid isn't quite as strong, then maybe one of those four movies that are scheduled to re be released next week Maybe they should have come out this week to try and mm. take advantage of a void right. in the market. But um, okay, so, so four next week. Four next week plus two on the uh, home streaming. So we got big stuff next week. There we go. Plenty mm -hmm. to choose from next week. But two this week, if you are interested, theater or home streaming, mm -hmm. you name it. Thank you so much, Sean. Okay. As mm -hmm. always, we will check in with you next Friday. 